and strong language. I got a concerned call from a Rachel Cairns. The son, uh, Connor, hasn't returned home. Oh, come on. Ali Sounder is picking up something when the bomb is thrown in his phone. It isn't Connor. I read some air. Dundee University can do a facial reconstruction. Yeah. Why did you leave his scooter out there? And is there foul play involved? I've been thinking about his safe place, so I've been checking out parts of the island, which he loves the most. It's no secret he had issues with his dad. And then there was the guys he started hanging about with. Who were those guys? Connor said they were old pals of his dad. Why are you still here? What do you mean? Nobody wants to spend their holiday watching a family fall apart. If you knew where Connor was, you would tell me, wouldn't you? Go and speak to Davidson Disposal. Apparently they had some issues with Connor. Even though I didn't like the boy, I hope you find him soon. I lost everything because of you! Everything! Whatever's happened to your boy, the answer lies in his mouth. It's not yours. Thank God. Spread. She looked like the body from Stromness Vaux, didn't she? Plastic round her head. Let's wait for the post-mortem. Can you stay here and talk to the workers? Because we need to find out who that vehicle belongs to and how it got here. I'm going to go and check in with the search team at our house. So, let me know if the Sockles find anything. Then how are you? Oh God. What? What happened? Mum? Uh, are you okay? What's wrong? It's Brid that found her body. She's dead. Stevie, you brought the car in. Hi. This morning, I was abandoned out of Sandwick. The farmer called wanting the toad. I didn't realise. I swear, if I'd known that she was in there, I wouldn't have. Of course you wouldn't. You're not in any trouble. I just need to try and find out what happened to her. So, was there anything unusual about the car? <sighs> not really. A bit of a wreck. The plates were off, but they're often like that. And was the farmer there when you picked it up? No. Nah, the... Money for the job was in the glove compartment. They normally pay over the phone these days. Right. And you didn't see anyone else nearby? It's pretty remote. 
OK. I'll need you to show me where you picked the car up, if that's OK. And the cash. We'll need to get forensics to take a look. Hi. Oh, hi, Billy. Um, I need you to check something for me. We're nearly finished down here. And? Anything? No, everything looks untouched. There's no sign of a laptop. And a housemate says she usually leaves it here. I've checked, and it's definitely not in a room at a work either. And it might be nothing, but it looks like this window could have been forced. We've dusted the footprints inside and out. OK. Is her bedroom upstairs? Yeah, first on the left. Am I looking for the same killer? There are definite similarities in the M.O. Head injury followed by suffocation. Both bodies cleaned the forensic traces, both wrapped in plastic. What? <sighs> are you not sure? You're not convinced? There was definitely less attention to detail. And Britt's hands are intact. No attempt to remove her fingertips. There appears to be some sort of residue in her nasal cavity and in her hairline just behind her ears. Anything else? You'll have my full report first thing, even if it takes me all night. Thank you, Cora. Thanks for doing that. Must have been very distressing. No. I needed to. I needed to see it was true. Were you too close? Yeah. Britt's dad and I split up when she was tiny. And I moved back to Fuller's to be near my parents. I always thought she would resent me for taking her somewhere so remote. But she never seemed to. When did you last speak to her? Yesterday morning. She was worrying about Connor. So had you met Connor? Oh, yes, yes. Twice. Once when I went down to Lyric. And she brought him up to Fuller at Easter. How did you get on? I didn't really know him that well. Did you like him? I wasn't sure of him. Something just wasn't quite right, you know? Brid seemed different after she met him. More distant somehow. It seemed more like she was keeping secrets. But she didn't want to, you know? And you, you think that was to do with Connor? <sighs> he seemed very persuasive, charming, but maybe I just got it all wrong. Maybe I just didn't even know her at all. And what about her mother? Did she give you any leads? She didn't seem very keen on Connor. She seemed to think that Brid had changed since she met him. She said he was persuasive. 
Do you think Connor could have done this? Is he capable of killing? I mean... It would be hugely out of character. People do things that are out of character all the time. Two murders as well as a missing person. It's a lot on your plate for your first week back. No, I'm fine and I've got a good team. What about the ID on the second body? Uh, no, still nothing. Facial recognition's been fast-tracked. Well, I leave tomorrow, so good news. I'll be out of your hair. Thanks for letting me know. That was one of the Sockos up at the car yard. They found something in the boot of the car. They think it's Connor's ring. Can you confirm this is Connor's? Still following a line of inquiry. It says it's, it's Connor who says a little mark at the bottom corner of the sea. And he was definitely wearing it the day that he went missing. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm certain. I was at the book launch and I told him I was proud of him and then I asked him to sign a copy of his book and he was reading it. So what happens now? We've taken DNA swabs. Just have to wait for results. The phone Connor's ring. We're just doing forensic tests on it. And what about Brid? Do you know what happened? No, not yet. They found the ring where you found Brid's body, didn't you? No, no, I am not having that. Connor thought the world of Brid. He would never hurt that girl. You should be talking to Martin. He was always hanging around after Brid. Maybe he knows something. The photographer? Huh? Yeah, he's one of our regulars. Do you have his details? Yeah, I'll get them for you. And then can you see him out? We're pushing our luck. We're here now.
Coroner's report puts her time of death at anywhere between midnight and 2 a.m., which means that she wasn't missing for very long before she was murdered. Where are we with the CCTV, Billy? So far, we've only got the footage from inside the holes. The rest should come through this morning. OK. Forensics have confirmed that the ring found at the breaker's yard is definitely Connor's. It's got his DNA on it and nobody else's. And his mum's confirmed that he was definitely wearing it that morning, which means that either Connor was somehow involved in Brid's murder or that he was held in the same vehicle himself. Is Connor capable of murder? I don't think that we can rule it out. I mean, there, there, there might be a side of Connor that we haven't seen yet. If that's the case, are we saying that Connor may have been responsible for the body in Stromnesvo as well? Until we've got a positive ID, we don't know what the connection is that we're trying to make. We need the facial depiction for the body in the suitcase. Where are we with tracing the owner of the car that Brid was found in? The serial number on the chassis matched to an owner registration, but the guy said he sold it a few months ago. It was a cash sale. He doesn't remember the buyer's name. We're trying to find out. OK, we'll keep on that, cos that could be key. The photographer from Nos View has booked on a boat back from Musa this morning. Should be due in about ten past ten. If I leave about now, I could probably make that, right? OK, thanks, everybody. Crack on. I'll be back. I've been thinking about Sheena Davidson. Brett thought that she was watching Abby. But what if it was actually Brett that she was watching? Yeah, bring her in and check her alibi. And if the CCTV ever shows up, then see if she's on that. OK, before we begin, many of you will have known Miss Fleming, especially those of you that live in the halls. You might start to hear a lot of gossip, but try not to join in, especially as we don't know the truth of the matter. Now, as your foreign teacher, you know you can come and talk to me if you're finding this difficult to deal with. Perez, Shelton Police, do you mind if I have a word? What about? Brid Fleming. She's been murdered. Tosh, Sandy. Come and have a look. It's the CCTV from the halls. What's she doing? Does the next camera pick her up? Looks like she's talking to someone she knows. Billy, are you able to zoom in? When did you last see Brid? Um, Wednesday. We were out with the search party. And you went to Musa yesterday morning? Yeah, for work. I'm a wildlife photographer. Rachel Cairns seems to be under the impression that you were trying to steal bread from Connor. That's not true. What about Connor? Did he believe that? Yeah. Brid and I got on well. When Connor was focused on his novel, he didn't always have time for bread. He went for a coffee and a walk a few times. Once to the pub. That's all. Would she agree with that assessment? Definitely. She would have, yeah. You mind if I have a look at your photographs? Sure.
Um, I'll leave you to it. Lana. We know this is you. Why didn't you tell us that you saw Brett that night? I was supposed to be in my room. Where were you gone? To meet my boyfriend. Did you see where Miss Fleming went? She went along as far as Hayfield Lane and then turned right into one of the side streets. I didn't see where she went after that. Is there anything else you can tell me, Clana? When she first saw me, she was messaging on her phone. She got a reply. It was from Connor. She swore me to secrecy. Molly, is Perez back yet? I can't reach him on the mobile. No, I am expecting him any minute. Okay, just let them know Clana's adamant that Connor is alive. Mrs. Davidson? What is it this time? I would appreciate it if you'd come down to the station and help us with our inquiries. Do I have a choice? You do. But as I say, your cooperation would be appreciated. Is Grant in here? Not at the moment. He's gone for some messages. We can chat to him later. I need to talk to you about something. Sure. Not in there. Okay. Um, shall we go for a walk? Bully, it's me again. Can we get a hold of any traffic cam footage from uh, along the south road? It seems like that just might have been where Brid was heading. Well, do. Look, we had a call about a speeding van on the road to Tingwall. Uniforms are tailing them. We checked their edge. It's Grant and Davidson. Right, I'll meet them there. You are travelling at, Mr. Davidson. Failing to stop is an offence. What's in the back of the van? Well, if you've nothing to say, you won't mind if I take a look? Where were you going with these? Before Connor went missing, He said he had a plan, and that he might need to go away for a few days. Told me to keep it a secret if he did, but not to worry, because he had everything under control. So when he disappeared, I just thought that was part of the plan. Even when that body was found out at Stromness 4, my mum said it didn't have anything to do with Connor. So I just put it to the back of my mind. But now Brid's dead. And I heard what you said about Connor's ring, but I know he wouldn't let anyone hurt her. And I don't know what to do. Did Connor say why he might have to go away? When we were still living in Glasgow and Dad was in prison, criminals got Connor to work for them. 
say that if he didn't, then it hurt that. What did he do? I think it was probably drugs. It was any second you hurt your knee. And then something happened and he tried to stop, but they wouldn't let him. That's the reason he tried to kill himself. It wasn't about being dumped by his girlfriend. He was trying to get away from them. You think it caught up with him again? What else could it be? Abby, I am going to have to tell your mum and dad about this. Firstly, Mrs. Davidson, can I ask where you were on Thursday evening, the night Brad Fleming went missing? Granton and I went for something to eat in town. Whereabouts? The Italian? On Commercial Street? We know the owner, Bruno. We chatted to him a wee bit. What time did you get home? Couldn't say exactly. 10.30? Maybe 11. And you didn't go out again until the next morning? That's right. Can I please have a glass of water? Thanks. Hey, what's wrong? More news. Grant and Davison was just pulled over for speeding. His van was full of toxic chemicals. We've arrested him. No permit. Interview resumed at 12.07. We know you've been dumping illegal waste, Sheena. Connor was right when he accused you, wasn't he? Is that why you were following Brid the day she died? Did she find out what you were doing? A young woman has been murdered. You were following her hours before her death and your only alibi is your husband who we've just pulled over for speeding in a van full of toxic chemicals. It's not a great picture so far. I didn't hurt Brit. I wouldn't do that. So why were you following her and Abby? I saw Connor. The night he disappeared. Where? Where did you see him? On the road between Westborough First and Bigstar. He was at the roadside, arguing with someone. Arguing? That's what it looked like. I was a bit away from them. What exactly did you see? It looked like they were shouting at each other. And then Connor turned and tried to walk away and the other guy pulled him back. Are you sure it was Connor? Yes. He had his scooter with him, I recognised it. What about who was with him? I couldn't say. He had his back to me. It looked like he had a hood up. But it was late. The light was fading. When you came to the yard the other day, it made me think. I was going to tell Brad what I'd seen. But why didn't you tell us all of this? Because Granton thought we'd find out about what you'd been doing. Right. I need you to show me on a map exactly where you were when you saw Connor. Between Connor disappearing and Brid's murder, both Clana and Sheena are saying he was alive. So where is he now? Sheena is saying that she was driving back from here when she spotted Connor having the argument. 
which puts him quite a bit further south from where the scooter was found. Alex? We're looking for any evidence as to Connor's whereabouts. Start searching in this area here. Yeah, sure. Thanks. My dad's going to shout. Don't worry, I'll do the talking. We're looking for any leads to corner in this area. You know the drill. Let's get started. Bit of news. There are four images of Brid on the traffic cam footage. The last one at 2314 at the junction of St Olaf Street. Then, nothing. Where was she going by herself at that time of night? Oh, that's the facial depiction come through as well. Ah, at last. There he is. Wow. Finally, our man in the suitcase. Well, let's get it sent out. See if anyone recognises him. That was Brit's bank. Someone has just used her card to make a contactless payment at the news agents in town. Did you know about this? No. I had no idea. Well, you don't know who Connor could have been working for, even although they clearly knew you. Honestly, I'd say if there was anyone. There will be, though. Because there always is. There's no way I could have known about this. I would have helped him. He has just told us that our son tried to take his own life to protect you. And that is probably the reason why he's missing now. This is your fault, Danny. This is all on you. Well, if you'd been looking after him properly, maybe you'd have noticed. I can't believe you just said that. This isn't helping. Oh, this isn't helping. Oh, well, maybe if you'd been here looking for Connor like you were supposed to, instead of chasing around after Danny, then maybe you'd have found him by oh, now! Oh, it's not his fault! It's your fault! Abby! Abby, come here now! Could you not just have fucking told me? You were in prison, Dad. Oh, thanks for the reminder. Hey, hey, it's not her fault. Who asked you? I'm having a private conversation with my daughter. You just fuck off. Just come on, Abby. <laughs> Dad, stop! <laughs> Hey, stop it! Behave yourself! You fancy a night in the cells? What are you, five years old? Grow up! Tosh. We've got Brett's credit card thief. I've been trying to talk to him, but he has just totally climbed up. Okay. Hi, Liam. I'm D.I. Perez. D.S. McIntosh was saying that she was chatting to you for a wee while there. Now, I'm sorry that we have to talk to you in here, because it must look a wee bit scary. Now, do you think that you'd be able to tell me where you got this? Did you find it somewhere? See, the thing is, um, the person that it belonged to was really badly hurt by someone and she died. And we are trying to find out who was the horror. Did you see her? I just found it when I was playing. Oh. Can you tell me where you found her? I was lying on the ground. I just wanted to buy some sweets. <gasps> okay. Do you think you could show us where that was? Thanks very much.
Billy, can you get forensics down here? I think I found the spot where she was abducted, and we need to check for Connor's DNA. Is that a photo of the wee one? Yeah, they're having fun down at the Esplanade. Oh, look at her. She's a wee smasher. Hmm. She really is. You should take a break and go and see them. It's nearly four o'clock and you haven't even had your lunch yet. If I hear from forensics, I'll let you know. Yeah, why not? down here to meet you and find my daughter with a complete stranger. Well, don't be daft. Caroline's not a stranger. She's my friend. She's a stranger to me. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I saw her in the street after I messaged you and we, we got chatting and I, I was only in the cafe a few minutes. I could basically see her the whole time. Just thought it would be nice to come down and see you both. We're here now. <laughs> the dream team. <laughs> Should get back to work. See you later. Bye bye, you tell it. Bye bye. I'll see you tonight. Forensics are still up there. Do you think it could be Connor's safe place? Maybe. Ah, the registration's through from the DVLA on the car that Brad was dumped in. The owner is Lloyd Anderson. Sure, I was just finishing up. The light was perfect today. Could match a storm approach. I need to talk to you about a car that's registered in your name. A Volkswagen Passat. That old heap of junk? I bought it for a song a few months back. I was using it for a painting. I think the juxtaposition is so incongruous. The ugliness of machines in this amazing landscape. Look, we found Brid Fleming's body in the boot of that car at the breaker's yard. Didn't even realize he was gone. It was awful news about Brid. I was here the night she went missing, by the way. Allison was with me. She'll vouch for me. When did you last see the car? Oh, a couple of weeks back. I was planning to let the elements do their work and then revisit it after a couple of months. A triptych. These are them. Three studies of a subject over time. These are my initial plans. 
Did anybody else know about the car? I couldn't tell you. People drive past there every day and would have seen it. Did you tell anybody else about it? Did Connor know what it was? Connor knew. <laughs> he was there the day I painted this. But that doesn't mean anything. I have the keys right here. Huh. And you never moved it? No. I have no reason to. Okay. If I think of anything else, I'll come back. This must be hard on you, Detective. I just want to find him. Sorry, I couldn't have been more help. If there was any news about Connor, you would have said, right? Yeah, there's no news. She should manage to get some rest now that we're on top of the pain, and I'll make a note of that changed dose, and we'll see how your mum does on that. <sighs> Thank you so much, Meg. And what about you? How are you doing? I'm, I'm fine. You know, I'm lucky I've got Lloyd at home to take care of me. He keeps me sane. Mm. He's amazing. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do without him. I'll see you soon, OK? Hi, Jimmy. Hi there. Just thought I'd give you a phone and see how your day was going. Good. Busy. Yours? Yes, yeah, same. Busy. I'm just on the way back to the station. It's good to hear your voice. It's good to hear yours. Listen, do you maybe want... Meg, I've got another call coming in and I have to take it. Can I call you later? Yeah, of course. Speak soon. Bye. Tosh. We've found Connor's phone. Okay, I'll be there in ten minutes. It's the same make and model as Connor's. Good. It's already been swabbed by forensics. The battery was dead, but we've just found a charger that works, so just waiting for IT to come and take a look. Hopefully no water ingress. Um You'll need to apply for permission to unlock that. Ah, oh, come on. Not that you're going to start listening to what I say. What happened about the car? We traced it back to Lloyd Anderson. The artist that was teaching Connor? Yeah, but he didn't even know it was gone. He was, he was using it for one of his paintings. And you believe him? Yes, I do. Either way, it's another link to Connor. He's increasingly looking like he was involved in Brid's murder. We know he's vulnerable, but we don't know what he's capable of. What about the body from Stromnesbo? We got the facial depiction. We've issued it as a press release. Oh. We'll see if anybody recognises him. Surely someone will. Shetland police are appealing for information relating to the body of an unidentified male discovered in Stromnesvo. A facial reconstruction has been created and officers are urging members of the public to look closely at the picture and consider whether this man looks familiar to you. That camera card you gave me for IT to check over from Marta and Tina. Just birds and wildlife. Nothing out of the ordinary, I'm afraid. OK, cheers, Billy. See I parents. I need your help. I'm not sure. 
Are you worried that you're going to get Connor into trouble? Abby, you're not. Also, we're going to get permission to open this eventually anyway. OK. I don't want to waste any more time. Great. We only get three chances, so you need to be fairly sure before you try anything. OK, try 2203-01. What's that? It's Fred's birthday. He often uses it as a password. No. Right, um, try 726-410. What's that? It's our old phone number in Glasgow. It's the only other password I know he uses. Well done, Abby. Right, um, do Brid and Connor tend to hang out locally, or...? They mostly like the more remote places, beaches and stuff. But they sometimes went down to the nest of sound. To the World War II, the, the old lookout tower? Used to have lunch there sometimes. Connor would come and meet her and they'd go down on his scooter. OK. We've been told that Brid was receiving messages from Connor on the day that she died. But isn't that impossible if the phone was in a field all along? Not necessarily. I mean, there's lots of ways to send messages these days. He could have got a burner phone to piggyback this one. The SIM card's been damaged, though, so they definitely weren't sent using that handset. Does the damage mean that all the information's been lost? Yep. Ugh. We're trying to retrieve as much as we can. One thing we do have is some of the geolocation information. Plotting the phone's location history. This is the last 10 days. Right, let's pinpoint everywhere he's been. Di Perez? Are you leaving already? Yeah, I thought I'd come and say goodbye. It's been an interesting experience. I'm sure Rona will keep you on your toes. Well. Good luck. You too. Hello? Meg. Hi. Hi. Um, what are you doing here? Look, I was just wondering. Do you want to meet up later? That would be great. OK. Great. 8.30? See you then. OK. okay. Meg. See you later. It's just what you would expect. The guest house, various places in Lairwick, all accounted for. But there's this one location that comes up a lot. And when you plot it on the map, there's nothing there. I'm going to go up and take a look. Well, hang on, it's getting late. I'll go. No, no, I want to. OK. OK. Yeah, thanks for that. I've just had a call from someone who works at the cafe at Sumbra Airport. She recognised the facial depiction on the news. OK, let's go check it out.
You know I didn't mean it. You're a brilliant mum. You take care of all of us. And especially me. I can't do this anymore, Danny. Can't? Oh, don't be daft. We need you. I, I need you. I'm tired, Danny. I'm tired of holding this family together. And I am tired of making excuses for you being such a fuck up. I need you to go. I need you to go. You're sure it was him? Yes. He was American. On holidays, said he'd worked here back in the day. What date would that be? It was the 18th. I remember because I had the day off the next day for my son's birthday. That's great. Thank you. Right, let's see if we can get security to pull up the CCTV from the 18th. That's him. Pause it there. Give the passenger manifest for that flight. Uh, yep. Only nine passengers on the flight, all Shetlanders returning, apart from this guy, William Arthur Rogers, US national. Thanks for letting me know. That was the lab. The blood spatter belongs to Brid. The fragment of T-shirt has got Connor's DNA all over it and her blood. Tosh. I think I've found Connor's safe place. 
It's an old caravan out in the middle of nowhere. Something strange going on. Sorry, what? What do you mean? I don't know. It's like there's something rigged up in here. There are all these cables. There's a timer. It started counting down. Oh my god, I think it's a bomb. Well, the, get, get out of there then. I'm trying, the door's locked. Tosh? Tosh, can you can you hear me? Join us for the next thrilling instalment of Shetland right here on BBC One, next Wednesday at nine.